I've been called all those names. I've been called a towel head, a turban head, a rag head, a terrorist, Osama bin Laden, variations of the N-word that I thought never existed. Several weeks ago, uh, two radio hosts uh, were talking about me and the work of my office and claimed that they couldn't remember my name uh, and said that they were going to give me a new name, that they were going to call me Turban Man. Uh, and then they sang that in, in a sing-song voice and made other comments. And I, I have very thick skin. I've been called far, far worse than Turban Man throughout my life. So on a personal level, it didn't affect me. But when that radio host said, listen, if that offends you, almost directed at me, if that offends you, then don't wear the turban and maybe I'll remember your name. And that's what really caused me some pause. Again, not about me, but how that affected others. In that one moment, that radio host took the most visible article of faith for a sick and, and just reduced it to nothing. What bothers me is in this moment when we have a president who dehumanizes people, when we have so many people pitting community against community, for people with a platform to act so recklessly and, and, and irresponsibly and contribute so negatively to our discourse, I'm afraid where that could lead. And I've seen where that could lead. In recent weeks, two sick gentlemen in California were attacked. You know, there are people uh, in, in the sick community who are afraid to go out because they don't have the same thin, th they don't have the same thick skin rather that I have. They don't have the same security detail that I have. This is the state I grew up in. Uh, this is a state that has afforded uh, me and my family and other immigrant families like mine so many opportunities. I, I did everything any normal American kid did, played Little League, played soccer, you know, checked all the boxes. Uh, and then I was working in D.C. one day uh, during 9-11, and a horrible, horrible tragedy hit the United States. But I didn't have time to grieve with my neighbors and my friends. We had this enormous backlash against Muslim Americans, against really anyone who didn't look American enough, or at least against anyone who looked like those images on TV that we associated with the people who were responsible for that attack. So on 9-11, I barely left my office in Washington, D.C. before somebody started calling me bin Laden. And that made me wonder, why is it that, you know, I've grown up here, I'm a sick American, I'm, you know, I'm as American as anybody else. Why am I being treated this way? Uh, and so, you know, I thought it was incumbent upon me to help sort of educate others as to who I was. And I thought there was no better way for me to do that than to become a public servant, and no better public service for me than to become a prosecutor. I don't think I ever thought it was possible for me and, or someone like me, uh, who looks like me, who, who believes like me, to achieve this position. I think what it shows people is that even in this particular moment, that there are pockets of decency in this country, that at least in New Jersey, uh, the American dream is alive and well, and that it doesn't matter what you look like, how you worship, where you come from, who you love, that you could achieve success no matter who you are. Fortunately or unfortunately for me, uh, all my girls can read now. Uh, and so they're able to read the articles about me uh, that come in our local paper. And so, you know, as much as we try to shield them and protect our kids from, from hateful conduct and hateful speech and, you know, all this other negativity out there, they know it now, right? They can read the paper and they could see what somebody called daddy. And so you know, we just try to sit down with them and say, you know, no matter how people treat you or what they say to you, you need to treat everyone with kindness, decency, and respect. My successes will be magnified, as will my failures. Uh, and so I'm trying to do everything possible to, to do my job as best I can, uh, because I realize that it, it just doesn't reflect on me. It reflects on a, a larger community. And I hope I could do it in a way that shows uh, the broader public who six are, that we value public service, that we value equality, that we are people who are there to fight for the rights of others in our personal lives, in our religious lives, and through our public service as well. I would say to, to any sick American out there who, who's watching this, uh, that anything is possible for them. Uh, that their identity is not an obstacle to success. It might be tough at times. I've been bullied, I've been, uh, I've been accosted, I've been not served in restaurants. <laughs> In this day and age, I have been turned away from, from service because I wouldn't take off my hat. And I've tried to explain to people it's not a hat. 
But you know what, I, I, I got through it. I got through it because there are so many good people out there. I got through it because it made me stronger. And I got through it because I, I know those individuals, they can, they can be taught. You know, I go back to what Nelson Mandela said. If you could be you know, taught to hate, you can learn to love. And that's what's motivated me as well. And I think I would just tell them to persevere because anything is possible and I'm proof of that.